Robert, thank you so much for willing to have this conversation. You say about postmodern constructivist therapies, and I'm quoting you, that in general, they tend to be more collaborative than authoritarian, more developmental than symptom-oriented, more process-oriented than content-focused, and more reflective than psychoeducational. You have just published recently a book on the distinctive theoretical and practical features of constructivist therapies. Mm -hmm. So could you tell us shortly um, about some of these distinctive features, if you want to pick some among the others? Well, the book that you mention, Anibal, is in a series that, is, that concerns different uh, cognitive and cognitive behavioral approaches to therapy. Yes. And so I was especially asked to distinguish constructivism from these other approaches, approaches like Beck's or Linehan's or a rational emotive behavior therapy, the work of Mike and Baum and others. And fortunately, this was easy to do because at levels that range from the epistemological premises of constructivism on through its specific strategies of engagement with a client and even particular techniques that are preferentially used by constructivists, it's pretty comprehensively different. And so at virtually any level at which you'd like to hold the lens of inspection over the contrasts between constructivist work and cognitive behavioral work, you would see differences that are substantial. At an epistemological le level, of course, mm -hmm. various constructivist approaches are joined by the assumption that we do not have a kind of access to reality, to the furniture of the universe, in a simple sense. In you believe in furniture? In the, the furniture of the universe, <laughs> including the, the literal furniture. It supports us, and we yes. have a relationship to it, but that relationship is very much mediated by our structure, by our functioning, the way in which we construct ways of relating to one another, for example, in the way we configure these chairs to support chairs. us, to support a certain kind of conversation, the way we construct other technologies in order to meet our purposes. So our interaction with the world is deeply humanized. It is deeply integrated into our structure as individuals, yes. and particularly as social systems, as intersubjective pairings, as in our conversation here today. So in all of these ways, when constructivists think about intervention, we think about intervening in meaning, and not merely mm -hmm. in intervening in the objective circumstances of people's lives. Okay. Mm -hmm. Although therapy, of course, may also embrace change at very practical levels, at action-oriented levels, in mm -hmm. addition to the level of our deepest meanings, feelings, uh, reflections on self and others, and so on. Okay. So, um, do you think contemporary psychotherapy somehow has been, or is being influenced by constructivist theories, meta-theories and practices, and if yes, into what extent is this recognized nowadays? I think that the, the impact of constructivism is more subtle. It occurs at nearly a cultural level that I believe that in postmodernity we have largely relinquished the assumption that we have easy access to the truth of, mm -hmm. uh, of human beings. And in this stance then, which certainly extends far beyond constructivist therapy, into expressions in the domain of art and even science. We have uh, mm -hmm. assumptions that really provide a premise or foundation for all of cultural life that are deeply constructivized. Constructivist psychotherapy participates in those movements okay. and gives them specific expression in the context of the helping relationship and also more generally in terms of the pursuit of research programs that tend to be more reflective more mm -hmm. qualitative, that treat the so-called subject as a data contributor. And so in psychological science, and most particularly in psychological practice, constructivist theory does shape the way in which we engage the work of psychology. Okay. So we know for sure that there is a constructivist uh, paradigm, um, but is there or was there any time a constructivist movement among clinical practitioners and researchers? 
And if yes, how well is it breathing today? Yes, in fact, there's a very important contribution being made at an organizational and institutional level by a friend of mine who lives in Lisboa. Oh, yes. 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 <laughs> and I think you should really interview him someday because okay, I think he has <laughs> lots to say about these I'll questions. Myself. That's okay. um, and in this respect, you would be one of several people who anchor developments in their respective regions and countries. One can find them, for example, with people like Les Greenberg in Canada, mm -hmm. Robert Elliott now in Scotland, Guilherme Feixas, Luis Botella, um, and, uh, and others, Olga Herrero, uh, Manuel Villegas in Barcelona, uh, numerous constructivists in Italy, in Chile, in Argentina, in Mexico. Um, so in one region after another, one would find vital centers of constructivist thought and training. But I think it is fair to say that in few of these places has constructivism competed successfully with dominant cognitive behavioral approaches mm -hmm. for a place in the academy, that is, in the yes. university structure. Um, there, the, the pride of place, the priority, the hegemony is usually claimed by cognitive behavioral uh, and they approaches. And they them. Yes. So uh, you think that this movement, did it uh, reach its stronger moment and influence in the 90s, 90s or is now less strong? Oh, I think it's still building. Still no building, doubt the next decade building. will be better than the one before. Yes. I, I say that with some humor, but also with the sense that um, in some ways the, the shift toward a constructivist uh, ethic, if you will, okay. in psychotherapy has changed its focus somewhat. Whereas during the decade, really the decades of the 90s and uh, much of the current decade, there have been a series of conferences organized around constructivism, uh, many books, uh, some journals devoted to constructivist thought, such as the Journal of Constructivist Psychology. Yes. Um, what we have now is something that is a broader kind of diffusion of constructivist themes into many approaches, into many models. So if you look at the work of people like uh, Bricker and Young and others within mm -hmm. a cognitive paradigm, you have people who are moving closer and closer to a constructivist view mm -hmm. with respect to attention to deep meanings, schemas, uh, tacit knowing. When you look at the field of uh, family therapy in particular and brief therapy, you see many people uh, such as my late colleague and friend Michael White, um, David Epstein, still living and contributing, uh, and others helping shape the narrative therapy movement. Uh, when you look at brief therapy approaches, you see people like Michael Hoyt, who are uh, clearly constructivist in their orientation, and explicitly so. And then, of course, Bruce Ecker, who you Ecker. not uh, long ago also yes. uh, invited here, and I suppose also interviewed. So I think that what we have is not so much a, um, an organization of constructivists that are requiring people to sign their identity cards and salute the same flag, okay. but more a kind of giving away of constructivist themes, a subtle influencing of many perspectives, humanistic, psychodynamic, systemic, uh, and more, uh, which I think is is ultimately the healthier contribution to make to culture. Good.